Okay, class, today we're in section 8.7, factor special products. Before, you factor polynomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now you will factor special products. Key vocabulary, perfect squared trinomials. You can use the special product patterns you have learned to factor polynomials, such as the difference of two squares. Key concept. Difference of two square patterns. Difference of two squares patterns. Algebra, a squared, perfect square, minus b squared, perfect square, is equal to a plus b times b minus a. Once again, a squared, perfect square, minus b squared, perfect square, that's going to equal to a plus b, parentheses, a minus b. That's the pattern. Here's an example. 4x squared, Right there is a perfect square, minus 9. So you're going to write a positive version and a negative version of the square root. So 4x squared, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. So that's your positive version. Then write the uh, negative version. And that only occurs when the first term is a, a perfect square. The last term is a perfect square. And then there's a minus sign. When that happens, you can do the shortcut. 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. Okay, with that concept in mind, we're going to work out the following problems. For example, 1, a, b, and c. y squared minus 16 is equal to y squared minus 4 squared. Then don't forget, we're factoring the difference of two squares. Factor the difference of two squares. Y squared is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. So I know I can say the square root of Y squared, Y. Square root of 16, 4. But a positive version and a negative version. Y plus 4 times Y minus 4. And that's it. B, same thing. 25M squared, that's a perfect square. Minus 36, that's a perfect square. Square root of 25, 5. Square root of m squared, m. Square root of 36, 6. Positive version, negative version. 5m plus 6 times 5m minus 6. x squared minus 49y squared. x squared is a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. y squared is a perfect square. Square root of x squared, x. Square root of 49, 7. Square root of y squared, y. Positive version, negative version. x plus 7y times x minus 7y is my final answer. Two binomials. Everyone complete guided practice number one. Complete guided practice number one. Okay, this should be your answer for number one. 2y squared plus 8 times 2y squared minus 8. Square root of 4, 2. Square root of y squared, y. Square root of 64, 8. Positive version, negative version. 2y plus 8 times 2y minus 8. Example 2, factor the difference of two squares. Factor the polynomial 8 minus 18n squared. 8 minus 18n squared. First thing we got to do here is factor out the common factor. The common factor between 8 and 18 is going to be 2. The common factor between 8 and 18n squared actually is 2. So when I factor that 2 out, what am I left with? 8 divided by 2 is 4. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And of course, the n squared comes along for the ride. Once again, 8 divided by 2 is 4. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And the n squared stays in place. Now that I have this, I can see right here that 4 is a perfect square. There's my minus sign indicating difference. And 9 is a perfect square along with n squared. So now I can apply my little pattern trick. All right, so what's the square root of 4? 2. Square root of 9? 3. 
Squared or n squared? n. Positive version, negative version. Final answer, 2 times 2 plus 3n times 2 minus 3n. The difference of two squares pattern. Key concept, perfect squared trinomial patterns. Perfect squared trinomial patterns. Perfect square trinomials. The pattern for finding the square of a binomial gives you the pattern for factoring trinomials of the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. These are called perfect square trinomials. As usual, let's get the key concept in our notes. All right, okay, here I want you to pay close attention as I explain the trick to work out this particular pattern. We got x squared plus 6x plus 9. Notice x, x squared is a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square. But we have a middle term 6x. So what that means is we have to test out the x squared and the 9 to make sure this 6x occurs. Now watch how I do this. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. Now, 3 times x is 3x. Multiply that by 2, and that gives me 6x. That tells me that the x plus 3 works, because I get all three parts back. Once again, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times x is 3x. Multiply that by 2, and that gives me 6x. That tells me that I'm okay. Let's try the same trick here, but the difference is we have a minus sign. Let's see if it still works. My first term is a perfect square. My last term is a perfect square. Got to have that to even begin it. All right, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25 is 5. Now see here it says minus and plus, right? That means that should be a minus sign there. So now I have a negative 5 times x. So what is a negative 5 times x? That's going to be a negative 5x. What's a negative 5x times 2? A negative 10x. That tells me that I'm okay and that my answer here is correct for this particular pattern. Once again, perfect square, perfect square. Square root, square root. Then multiply, then multiply by 2. Perfect square, perfect square. Square root, square root, then multiply, then multiply by 2. All right, let's look at example in 3 and see if we have the pattern down. Factor the polynomial. n squared minus 12n plus 36. And remember now, we're factoring perfect square trinomials. That means the first term is perfect, the last term is perfect. All right, so we apply our same trick. Square root of n squared is n. Square root of 36 is 6. We notice we got a minus sign, so that has to be a minus. 6, a negative 6 times n is a negative 6n. A negative 6n times 2 is a negative 12n. So once again, all three parts are represented, and so therefore, this answer is correct. n minus 6 squared. n minus 6 squared. Let's go to b. 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. 9x squared is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. Notice I got a minus sign. That's telling me it's going to be a difference. All right. What's the square root of 9x squared? 3x. What's the square root of 4? 2. What is 2 times uh, a negative 2 times 3x? A negative 6x. What's a negative 6x times 2? A negative 12x. So once again, all three parts showed up. Let's go to C. 4s squared plus 4st plus t squared. 4s squared, perfect square. t squared, perfect square. Here we got plus, so we know our middle sign is going to be a plus sign. Square root of 4, 2. Square root of s squared, s. Square root of t squared, t. 2s times t gives me 2st. 
2s times t gives me 2st. 2st times 2 will give me 4st. So once again, using the pattern, all parts show up. So this answer is correct. All right, let's take a look at example four. Factor a perfect square trinomial. Factor the polynomial negative 3y squared plus 36y minus 138. Negative 3y squared plus 36y minus 108. That's going to equal to, notice what we're doing. We're factoring out the greatest common factor between those three numbers. That makes it far easier for us to work. And it makes it a perfect square. So in this case, the greatest common factor is going to be a negative 3. All right, now a negative 3 divided by a negative 3 is 1, so we're left with y squared. 36 divided by a negative 3 leaves us with a negative 12. And a negative 108 divided by a negative 3 leaves us with a positive 36. Okay, so now we apply our, pat our pattern. y squared is a perfect square. 36 is a perfect square. Don't forget, we got a minus sign here. All right. So once again, perfect square, perfect square, minus sign. So the square root of y squared is y. Square root of 36 is 6. y times a negative 6 is a negative 6y. Multiply that by 2, and you get a negative 12y. Once again, all three components are represented using the pattern, and we have our complete answer. Don't forget that negative 3 is down there also. All right, now for those of you who may be confused as to how to affect out a negative when the negative was not in every part of the uh, problem, so every monomial did not have a negative. The reason they did that is because, like in the previous example we showed you in a couple of other sections before, they don't want this first term to be negative. So what they do is they affect out the negative first. So this is our original problem. We don't want this term to be negative, so we factor out the negative, and then we change the sign of everything else that is in the trinomial. So a negative 3y squared becomes 3y squared. A positive 36y becomes a negative 36y. And a negative 108 becomes a positive 108. And now the negative is sitting on the outside. Notice if you don't multiply this negative back through, everything would change back to its original. So now, after factoring out that negative, then they take out the 3. And so now everything is divided by 3, see? So 3y squared divided by 3 is y squared. 36, a negative 36y divided by 3 is a negative 12y. And 108 divided by 3 is a positive 36. And then from there, you would factor. Example 5, solve a polynomial equation. Solve the equation x squared plus 2 thirds x plus 1 over 9 is equal to 0. Write the original equation. Multiply each side by 9. So you end up with 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Notice 9x squared is a perfect square and 1 is a perfect square. So the square root of 9x squared is going to be 3x. The square root of 1 is going to be 1. 3x times 1 is 3x. Multiply that by 2 and you get 6x. So that tells you then that your answer is A-OK. -okay. All right, we just found the same pattern. So now we got 3x plus 1 squared is equal to 0. Now don't forget it's equal to 0, so we must use the zero product property. OK, now don't forget that. See where we are right here? Don't forget that 3x squared, 3 plus 1 squared equal to 0 can be rewritten as 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. Same thing. Notice the same thing is being repeated also. 3x plus 1, 3x plus 1. So you don't have to do it twice. You just do it once. 3x plus 1 is equal to 0, and you solve that for x. Don't forget that's going to be plus 1, plus 1, and you end up with 3x is equal to um, a negative 1. You divide by 3, divide by 3, and x is equal to a negative one-third.